Yep. Let's now bring in 2020 Democratic presidential hopeful Andrew Yang. A major issue he is running on is this universal basic income. He calls it the freedom dividend. Andrew, welcome to Fox News at night. Oh, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Okay, so you heard what Trey said there in his reporting, and we have some information on this too from technologyreview.com on Finland's universal basic income trial. It says a trial where unemployed people in Finland were given a basic income for two years did not get them into work, but it made them healthier and happier. How are you going to sell this to the American people? Well, the, the Finland data was very promising in terms of people's health and mental health. And the employment benefits you wouldn't expect to see unless you were to have the cash benefits implemented across a community for a certain period of time. So under my plan, the Freedom Dividend, if you put $1,000 a month into the hands of every American consumer, a lot of that money would get circulated through the economy over and over again, and it would create hundreds of thousands of new jobs in Main Street economies around the country. Yeah, you know the number one question is how the heck are you going to pay for it? I mean, one estimate I read said three to four trillion dollars. We're already operating at a debt that most Americans, regardless of party, are not comfortable with. Um, so what is your plan? Is it taxing our way to that benefit? So taking from those who are working uh, to give to everybody, whether they're working or not? Well, if you look at who the biggest winners are going to be from artificial intelligence and new technologies, it's going to be Amazon, Google, Facebook, Uber, the biggest technology companies in our country. And we all can see that Amazon paid zero in federal taxes last year despite uh, record revenues. And so if we know that the big winners in this new tech technology age are going to be paying zero taxes, then of course we're not going to have enough money to go around. But if we follow other countries' examples and create a mechanism where we all benefit from these innovations, then we can pay for a $1,000 dividend for every American adult. Our economy is up to a record $20 trillion. Mm -hmm. Just the problem is that those benefits are not being felt by the average American family. You are a very successful entrepreneur. I mean, this is a country that's very unique in the way that that can happen. Do you worry about mounting uh, trillions in new taxes uh, is going to discourage the entrepreneurial spirit or the ability to succeed like you have? Well, what I worry about is that if you look at the rates of business formation uh, and business starts around the country, they're at multi-decade lows in 85% of the country. So if you want entrepreneurship to flourish more broadly, then you should be trying to put buying power into the hands of the average American family and make it so that starting a business is more realistic and feasible for hundreds of thousands of Americans around the country, which is what the Freedom Dividend would provide. Okay, I want to, because when you talk about this, and again, the price tag, um, there are a lot of questions about how that's going to be solved without then impacting large companies who then have to worry about tax, uh, you know, their stockholders. And then, of course, that translates down into investors and 401ks. I mean, the, there are ripple effects that I'm not an economist, so I won't pretend to be one, but questions that have to be answered. But something else I believe that you support based on your website, Medicare for all. Um, and again, this is a question that when you poll, people originally say, that sounds great. Uh, everybody should have health insurance or health coverage of some kind. Um, but the Kaiser poll, um, when you really ask people how it's going to be paid for or the implications of it are this. Um, when you ask about eliminating private health insurance companies, it's upside down by negative 21 points, requiring most Americans to pay more taxes. Again, upside down by 23 points, delaying some tests or treatments, the access people would have, they say then um, by a negative 44% reaction, uh, they're not for that when they deal with the reality of what it may cost them. So how do you sell that? Well, I've been the CEO of a company, and I know that health insurance right now is this major anchor in our economy. It makes it harder to hire new workers. When you do hire someone, you're incentivized to make them temporary or contract workers and not give them benefits. It's harder to switch jobs. It's harder to start a business. And so the fact that Americans are very now uh, uh, waking up to the fact that we can improve on our health care system and the, the notion that we can't afford it or that everyone's going to have to pay more in taxes is ignoring the fact that we're already spending 18% of GDP on our health care, twice as much as other countries, to worse results. It's why we're so frustrated by the system. So if we take the money that companies are already plowing into health care, we have enough money to be able to make health care more accessible to more Americans and not break the bank or raise taxes on uh, the average family. Well, I mean, how, how in the world do you pay for that? I mean, the, the estimates on Senator Sanders' Medicare for All plan is $32 trillion. I mean, the money doesn't grow on trees. You talk about what companies are already plowing into this system, but so much of this equation has to do with how the government would compensate doctors or hospitals. And we already know that there are a lot of patients who can't get in uh, with doctors because the government does not pay uh, enough of a reimbursement rate uh, for a lot of these government programs. I mean, do you worry about the impact on health care not just health insurance, but actual access to good doctors and care. 
I'm friends with many doctors and healthcare professionals, and their number one frustration is that we're bogging them down with excessive bureaucracy and paperwork, that they spend more time filling out mm -hmm. paperwork than they do seeing patients. So if you simplify that process, then the reimbursements don't need to be uh, astronomical in order to make it pay off for the doctor or the healthcare provider. If we had clean up our bureaucracy, that would liberate many doctors to do what they wanted to do in the first place when they got, when got trained, which is actually care for patients. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I know many of them are concerned they're not going to get those reimbursement rates. And again, um, whether lessening the administrative burden uh, can also lessen maybe the staff that they need to have. But again, there we're talking about jobs. Anyway, Andrew Yang, great to have this conversation with you. Um, very interesting. We'd love to chat more with you. Let us know. Yeah, I would love that. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks, Andrew.